how do immune checkpoint inhibitors work and what are some of the side effects that you should be aware of? So to understand how immune checkpoint inhibitors, you first have to understand the function of the T cell. So this is a part of our immune system and its job is to go around and destroy foreign materials such as viruses, bacteria, and even cancer cells. So obviously the T cell is an extremely important part of our host defense, but one of the problems that can happen if they become too overactivated is that it can start to attack your own body, leading to all sorts of autoimmune diseases. So for example, lupus or thyroiditis or inflammatory bowel disease. These are all examples of when our own immune system gets too activated and it starts to uh, recognize our own body as foreign, destroying our own cells. And so you have to strike a really nice balance between being activated enough to destroy the viruses, bacteria, and cancer cells out there, but not being so active that you are you know, attacking your own body. And so what we have uh, on the T cells are these things called immune checkpoints. And the immune checkpoints are essentially ways that the immune system can turn off the T cells. So you have the CTLA-4 receptor, you have the PD-1 receptor, and on uh, other uh, cells, you can have this thing called the PD-1 ligand. And so these are ways to shut off the, uh, the T cell. The problem is that cancer cells become very smart. And a lot of times they can actually start producing things that will bind these receptors and effectively knock out the T cell. So they will bind here, they'll bind at all these places and turn off the T cell. So instead of the T cell going down and uh, killing all the cancer cells, now the T cells are all turned off and are not attacking the cancer cells at all. So this is where our immune checkpoint inhibitors come in. And so we will actually just knock out these um, you know, receptors and these ligands in order to prevent the T cell from being turned off. And this way, the T cell will go about its business uh, and actually do the job it's supposed to, which is destroy these cancer cells. But remember, as we are doing this, we are essentially completely revving up our T cells and our immune system. And so the risk of autoimmune conditions vastly increases. And so when you're thinking about the side effects of immunotherapy or immune checkpoint inhibitors, you have to think of uh, all of the itises. So basically what you can do is just take any organ and add the word itis to the end of it and that basically sums up one of the side effects of immune checkpoint inhibitors. So let's say that you have a patient with chest pain and tropes in the 3000s. What should you think of? That would be myocarditis. What if they have a diffuse rash that's involving their entire body? That would be dermatitis. And the reason that I started with these two is that these tend to be the earliest side effects that you tend to get. How about hypotension plus hyponatremia? That would be adrenalitis or adrenal insufficiency. If you have hypotension plus bradycardia plus hypoglycemia and also hypothermia, then what that would that be from? That would be thyroiditis. So essentially could cause myxedema coma if severe enough. A very common one that you see is shortness of breath and that would be pneumonitis. Diffuse watery diarrhea, something like uh, greater than 10 bowel movements a day. This is also a very common one. So greater than 10 bowel movements a day, then you should think about colitis. What if you have an acute kidney injury plus red blood cells on the UA? That would be nephritis, weakness, and elevated CK. That would be myositis. And then let's say you have right upper quadrant pain and LFTs in the thousands. That would be hepatitis. So again, pick basically any organ that you want activating or overactivating our immune system can essentially cause it to attack it and that can lead to an itis of that organ. Oh yeah, and also another very morbid one is altered mental status. You can even get cerebritis. So all of these things are what they call eye rays or immune related adverse events. And so the typical timing is going to be uh, around three uh, months is when you start to see some of these uh, eye rays. You do also have this thing called delayed or chronic eye rays. And these, this can basically happen at any time, sometimes even a year out from when they receive their immunotherapy. And so I mentioned that the myocarditis and dermatitis tend to be the earliest. Um, but after that, around the four week mark, you tend to see colitis 
And then after six weeks, that's when you start seeing the endocrinopathies and they can be very significant. You often see multiple endocrine systems impacted and you can even get panhypophysitis. So basically your entire pituitary system is affected and it tends to be permanent damage to um, the endocrine system. And so these patients will have to be on uh, replacement, hormone replacement with steroids, thyroid replacement, basically lifelong after receiving uh, or having this side effect. Now, what is our treatment for this? So um, again, all of this is from overactivation of our immune system. So what is a treatment that we can give to calm the immune system down and kind of shut it off again? That's actually going to be steroids. And so interestingly, apparently there is some data that even if you do receive steroids, you would think that that would reduce the efficacy of your immunotherapy. But apparently there is data that even if you receive steroids for an immune-related adverse event, it does not necessarily worsen the outcome of your immunotherapy. That being said, if you have a very severe uh, adverse event, usually that precludes you from ever receiving immunotherapy uh, again. For example, if you had myocarditis, like severe myocarditis, uh, I had a patient this week that had um, aplastic anemia from their immunotherapy. So if it's a very severe adverse event, you're basically never a candidate to receive one again. But it is interesting that steroids do not worsen outcomes. All right, and then finally, I want to just talk to you a little bit about some of the medications that are out there or the immune checkpoint inhibitors that are out there. So your anti-CTLA-4, that one is going to be epilimumab. This is typically used for melanoma or renal cell carcinoma. For anti-PD-1, you have nivolumab and pembrolizumab, which you may see pretty commonly. That is going to be for conditions like melanoma, lymphoma, and non-small cell lung cancer. And anti pdl one you have things like atezolizumab and dervalumab. And this one is going to be lung, breast, liver, and some urologic cancers. So one interesting thing to note is that not all cancers are expected to respond equally to immunotherapy. There are some cancers that have much better response rates than others. And generally, these are going to be um, cancers that have a high burden of mutations. So cancers that tend to mutate a lot, like melanoma, where you have all this sun exposure, or any carcinogen-related um, cancers, like related to smoking and things like that, uh, respond better to immunotherapy. And the, the reason is because it's thought that as you accumulate so many mutations, there are more antigens for your immune system to potentially recognize as foreign. And so it's more likely that when you turn the immune system back on, it is going to recognize those foreign antigens and those mutations and be able to kill off the cancer. So high burden of mutations means it is more responsive to immunotherapy. Finally, there are a couple of other points. So anti-CDLA tends to have earlier adverse events mainly because it affects the uh, T cells earlier in their um, proliferation process. They basically work in the lymph nodes, whereas the PD-1 and PD-L1 uh, antibodies uh, tend to have later uh, adverse effects. And one interesting thing to note is that atezolizumab uh, is thought to have reduced side effects because it does not work on the PD-1, PD-2 um, system, and it only involves the PD-L1 and PD-1 receptor interaction specifically. I hope this was a quick and useful explanation for what immune checkpoint inhibitors are and how they work, and also some of the main side effects to look out for, which is basically all of the itises of any organ. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.